Hello and welcome to Coefficient of Correlation. Today we will try to find out coefficient of correlation for the data given. The data is marks scored in statistics and marks scored in economics. We will try to see if there is any kind of correlation between the marks being scored by students in these two subjects. Correlation in the sense, is it the case that when a student scores low marks in statistics, he also scores low marks in economics. If a student does well in statistics, then he does well in economics also. So we will try to see if there is any kind of correlation. Now for Finding out correlation will be needing a huge table. If you remember from our other videos, we call it a pigeon box or a kabutar khana. So let us make the table and then we'll proceed to finding out correlation. So here we have our table. Now if you can see, by and large it is the same table, marks in economics and marks in statistics. We have marks in economics and statistics, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70. Then here we have a 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70. Then here it is by and large the same table. Now if you can remember the formula for coefficient of correlation, then we can go ahead and solve this equation, to solve this table. First of all, let us recap the formula for coefficient of correlation. It was n sigma f dx dy minus sigma f dx sigma f dy upon under root of sigma n f dx square minus sigma f dx whole square and similar kind of thing for y n sigma f dy square minus sigma f dy whole square this is it this is the formula for coefficient of correlation now if we have a look at this formula we need to find out n, then we need to find out f dx dy, then we need an f dx, f dy, f dx square and f dy square. These are the unique values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 unique values that we need to find out. As far as these two values are concerned, f dx whole square and f dy whole square, these are nothing but whole squares of these two values. So these should not be an issue, but we still need to go ahead and find out six values. Now, if you remember from our other videos, how do we find out these values n? What is n? n is total number of elements. Total number of elements. These are the individual frequencies of various combination. All these together constitute your n. So here we have our row wise total 5, 30 to 40 marks in economics, 5 students have done so, 40 to 50 marks in economics, 11 pe people have done, 50 to 60, 6 and so on. Similarly marks in statistics, 30 to 40 is 6, 10 and so on. And what do we call this measure? In original table it was written as total of row wise and total of column wise. It was total of row wise, total of columns. But now as we proceed towards solving this correlation problem, we will call it F. And this thing that we have, we will call it N. What is this? This is N. Next we need F dx dy. So we will call this cell f dx dy then we need to call this cell 
as f dx d. Okay. So these two cells, uh, these two rows and columns are fixed, f dx dy and f dx dy. Then remaining are f dx and dy. We need to give them some names. Let us say this we'll be using as x and for statistics we'll call them y. So when x is over here, these values become f dx and f dx square while these values become f dy and f dy square. So this is how our table will look like and then now we need to find out dx and dy also. How do we go about dx and dy? First problem that we face is group data. Group data, we have no mechanism to solve group data. We need to find out mid values of this. So 30 to 40 mid value would be 55, 40 to 50 would be 45, 55 and 65. Similarly, let us find out mid values of X that is marks and economics. They will be 65. Here are our mid values. Next is as these values are very huge, let us take some particular value as reference point. In our case, let us say we take maybe this 45 as reference and here also we will take this 45. It is not necessary that you take same reference points, it's just we will take these as reference points. So if this is reference, so it becomes 0 by default, this is my starting point. And 55 is 45 plus 10. So there is a deviation of 10. Or rather if you go by formula, this will be x minus assumed mean. 45 minus 55 minus 45. 65 minus 45 would give you a 20. And similarly if you come here, it is x minus a. So 35 minus 45 giving me a minus 10. And now if we have a look at these deviations, they all can be divided by 10. So let us go ahead and divide them all by 10. So we get minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. And as marks in statistics are y, y, so this becomes my dy on which I'll build all my problem further. If we come here, 45 has been taken as reference, so this becomes minus 10. And now if we look at these, Deviations, we see that they can be divided by 10. So let us go ahead and divide all these values by 10. Here we have our second set of deviations and because these are for x, we call them dx, marks in economics. Now let us go ahead and find values of f, dx, dy. How do we go about that? F respective cell values multiplied by the respective dx and dy. So we have 3 multiplied by its dx multiplied by dy. 3 multiplied by minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 gives me a 3. 1 multiplied by minus 1 multiplied by 0 gives me a 0. Now we know that because this is 0 it will make all these values 0 because ultimately they all will be multiplied by this 0 at some point of time. So they all will be 0. Similarly, because here we have dy as 0, they all will be multiplied at some point of time by 0. And so let us put them also as zeros. Done. Now, let us find out remaining values. 3 is done, this is done, 1. 1 multiplied by minus 1, multiplied by 1. So 1 multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1 is 1. There is a negative sign, so you will get a minus 1. Then let us find out, where do we go, this, this one. 1 multiplied by 1, multiplied by minus 1. We again get a total of minus 1. This 2 will give you a 2, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 2. This gives you a 2. This gives you a 2. This gives you a 4 and this will become 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. 1 multiplied by 2 
multiplied by 1. So we get 2 multiplied by 1, multi 2 multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1. So that is fine. Let us check the signs. If they are good, zeros are all here, then this is a minus 1, zero, 1, 0. Fine. The signs look good. Let us go ahead and find summations. For 30 to 40 in economics, what are total F D X D Y? We get it as 2. Here I'll get it as 3. And finally, here I get as 6. 6 and 3, 9 and 2, 11. If I add them over here, I'll get 2, 0 is done. This will be 3 and 6. So once again, it will be 11. So we very well know that these both values are f dx dy and they will be same in any case dx dy. They will always be same because ultimately we have added the same value. Now let us jump to f dx. What is f dx? Respective f multiplied by respective dx. As simple as that. So let us pick up 5 multiplied by minus 1. How much do we get? Minus 5. And let us pick up 11 multiplied by 0, giving me a 0. Then let me pick up 6 multiplied by 1, giving me a 6. And then last one would be 3 multiplied by 2, giving me another 6. So in all this will give me 6 and 6, 12 minus 5 is 7 exactly. So this becomes your another value. And what is this? This is fdx. And then we go for fdx square. Remember, we need square of dx multiplied by f. Square of dx multiplied by f. Or what we can do is, we already have fdx multiplied to dx. So fdx multiplied once again by dx will make it f, but dx goes to power 2. So you can go either ways, we will go with the shortcut of multiplying fdx to f. That is minus 5 to minus 1, giving me Six multiplied by two is twelve. Six multiplied by one is one. Six. Now let us find out values of f dy. Six multiplied by minus one. Minus six. Ten multiplied by zero. Zero. Five multiplied by one. Five. Four multiplied by two is eight. Okay. And then total of these would be thirteen minus six. Giving us seven. We have missed this total 12 and 6, 18, 18 and 5, 23. This is f dx square. And what is this? This is f dy. Now I am writing these f dx, f dx square, f dy only for our reference. You need not write it down in your exam or when you are actually solving it. We are just writing it for reference so that we know what are these with respective values. Now f dy square, what do we do? f dy, we already have multiplied once again to dy. So it will be f dy multiplied by dy, that is f dy square. Minus 6 multiplied by minus 1, giving you 6. 0 multiplied by 0 will be 0. Pi multiplied by 1 would be 5 and 8 multiplied by 2 would be 16. So giving me a total of 27. This is our last value that we need to find out from table f dy square. Now let us go ahead and substitute these values in the formula and we should be through with it. We have R is equal to N. N is 25. Multiply by F dx dy. F dx dy is 11. Minus sigma of F dx. Sigma of F dy. Again a 7. We have n f dx square. f dx square is 23. 
minus f dx whole square sigma of f dx whole square that is whole square of this is first set for y it will be n f dy square sigma of f dy square is 27 minus sigma of f dy whole square sigma of f dy is 7 whole square this gives me 275 minus 49 upon we get 575 minus 49 675 minus 49 giving me 226 upon product of 526 and 626 this giving me 226 upon under root of 329276 giving me 226 upon 573.82 giving me a coefficient of correlation of 0 0.3938 this is my coefficient of correlation so now in the second video we can see that after all this is not so much torturing or complex or confusing it is very much straightforward now if you practice more and more questions which will be available from the link below you should be able to solve these kind of problems very easily so for now, this is it. Next time when we meet, we'll take up some different problems of correlation and regression. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.